Okay, we have a tank that contains 100 gallons of brine, salt water, um, and the amount of salt in the tank is 60 pounds. There's a certain template we can use to set this problem up. We have um, Y is going to equal the amount of salt in the tank um, at time t and t is in minutes and the amount is going to be in pounds so we have sorry it looks bad fix it so we have uh, there we go uh, y of t equals to that we're in search of y of t a function y of t the amount of salt in the tank in any time t so set up an equation the change of salt over time dy dt this is in pounds per minute is equal to the rate of pour how fast you're pouring it in times the concentration and what we have to do is do that for coming in and subtract that for going out The units would be like a chemistry question. We can get them to cancel out and end up in the right unit. So um, you're pouring in at three gallons every minute. Three gallons per minute. And then the uh, that salt water that you're pouring in, brine, it'll be three pounds of salt per gallon so the gallons cancel out and you have pounds per minute in the right unit um, it, it gets poured out it leaves at the same rate so the rate of pour is the same three gallons every minute but the concentration though let me write it as a fraction um, we have, um, it's supposed to be in pounds per gallon to get the units to come out right. And But now we're talking about in the tank. If I had to draw a picture for you, it's going to be pretty bad. But we have coming in, we have some already in. We have this thoroughly mixed or some kind of mixing, thoroughly mixed, and it's going to come out. Um, there is a hundred gallons in the tank and every minute we gain three gallons and we lose three gallons. So it stays as a hundred gallons always in the tank. How much salt is in the tank is Y, our function. And so we have Y pounds per hundred gallons in the, in the tank. And it's our job to solve this for Y. And ultimately it simplifies nicely. When you have it going in at the same rate that it's going out, it ends up as separable. Um, it could be linear too. Um, when you have it um, going in and out at different rates, that's what makes it more difficult to solve. Okay, so we have, it'll be um, only linear in that case. So we have 9 minus 3y over 100 is equal to uh, dy dt. That's our differential equation that we are to solve. Um, what about this 60 pounds? What that is, is the initial amount. When time is zero, y is 60. It's an initial condition that helps you solve for the constant c. And so we, um, we could set this up as separable or linear. I believe separable would be easier. 
And so um, it becomes 900 minus 3y over 100 is what dy dt is. And uh, we would divide by the 900 minus 3y and multiply by the dt. We'd end up with the fact that dy over 900 minus 3y will be equal to 1 over 100 dt. And let's add a slide so we can uh, solve that on the next slide. We have dy 900 minus 3y equals to 1 over 100 dt. We're going to solve that. Okay, so we've separated. Now we have to integrate. And we just do a u sub there. We let u be equal to 900 minus 3y. So du is negative 3 dy. So negative one third of du takes the place of dy. And so we have um, negative one third of 1 over u du or negative one-third the natural log of u. So this is negative one-third the natural log of 900 minus 3y. And it's going to be equal to um, 1 over 100 times t plus some constant c. As soon as c comes in, you should solve for it. We know that when t equals 0, y equals 60. So we can solve for c right now. We take negative one-third the natural log of 900 minus 180 and that's supposed to be equal to 0 plus c. So 900 minus 180 that'll give us 7, 720 and so that's what c is. C is negative one third the natural log of 720. All right, so now we um, plug that back in and we can multiply everything by three. We have negative one third the natural log of 900 minus one, uh, sorry, minus three uh, Y. And that's going to be equal to 1 over 100 times t minus 1 third of ln of 720. Um, times everything by 3, we'd have the natural log of 900 minus 3y equals to, well, this times by a negative 3. So we have negative 3 over 100 t plus the ln of 720. And now we can raise e to both sides or not. It's debatable whether we want to do this or not. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and uh, raise e to both sides. And we'd have um, 900 minus 3y. If you have e to the a plus b, it's e to the a times e to the b. And so we'd have e to the negative 3t over 100. And then we'd have e to the log of 720. So that would be times 720. OK, 60. Yeah, I think we're good. So then, so, so then we can solve for y. Or we can leave it just like this. It's up to you. Um, our job now is to take this and take it to the next level and find out um, when t is a very specific value, then what is y? Um, the question states that when t is 100 log 2, find y. And so let's copy that down. So we have 900 minus 3y equals 720 e to the negative 3t over 100. Okay, great. And we know that um, T 
is equal to 100 log 2. We'll plug that in and we need to find y and we're all done. Okay, all right, great, almost done here. So we have um, 900 minus 3y is equal to 720 e to the negative 3 over 100 and we times that by 100 log 2. Plug in t equals 100 log 2. The 100's cancel and you have e to the negative 3 log 2. Can't cancel the e in the log. You must first take care of the 3 and move it up as the exponent and then you can cancel. So it's 2 to the negative 3 or it's 1 over 8. 900 minus 3y is 720 times 1 over 8. 8 goes into 720 90 times and so 900 minus 3y is equal to 90 so 3y is 90 I'm sorry 900 minus 90 um, 3y is 810 just uh, take these and have them swap places and so, uh, yeah, so y is equal to 270. Units uh, would be pounds. Okay. All right, great. So the template that you solve for, the setup, would be that um, you're taking the concentration of salt and multiplying by the rate of pour. And so let me, uh, sorry, I don't know what just happened. Okay, there we go. Turn this off go back so um, this is the uh, all-important template that you need that dy dt will be equal to the rate of pour times the concentration on the way in and then the rate of pour times the concentration on the way out um, I didn't emphasize the fact that we we're multiplying there but there it is okay and just fill in the template and uh, the most difficult case is when you have the um, rate of pour, I mean, um, yeah, the, the rate of pour going in being something different than the rate of pour going out. And in that case, then that causes this denominator here to be a function of time. If you gained uh, a gallon every minute, then that wouldn't be 100 constant. That would be 100 plus T. Or if you gain three gallons every minute, it would be 100 plus 3T. And so that thing changes when, when you have a, a difference in rates of pour. Well, that's the question, and uh, and that's the solution. Two hundred and seventy. Okay, great.